The importance of good cordage may not be as obvious as cutting or combustion, but it has many uses. Cordage, another name for rope, string, lashing, and other types of things, can be used for clothing, drying lines, animal traps, climbing rope, hanging up a killed animal to clean it, hanging food or a pot over a fire, hanging up miscellaneous objects, making a net, and so much more. Cordage is especially useful for building shelters where often poles and a roofing is needed to be tied together. It can also be used as a shoulder strap for carrying supplies or to tie down your backpack. Rope can be used as a pant belt, and 550 pair cord makes great shoelaces. Cordage is a fundamental component of some friction fires, such as bow drills. Cordage is also utilized in many forms of boat building, such as lashing together a raft or canoe style boat frame. Strong cordage can even be used to improvise weapons, such as a bowstring, lasso, or fashioned to a bowl of throwing device. Cordage can make a warning alarm for dangerous predators at your campsite by tying a rope like a tripwire around your camp and hanging something noisy on it like metal utensils or tin cans that will clang together when animals bump into the rope. Cordage can be used for first aid, such as strapping a brace against a broken bone, creating a sling for a broken arm, having bandages, securing an injured person to a stretcher if necessary, pulling an injured person up to a ledge or lowering them down, or to secure someone to an anchor so they don't fall into the water, you know, things like this. Cordage obviously can be used as a tourniquet to stop bleeding. Some types of cordage are flammable and can be shredded and used as a tinder kindling if you're desperate. Flammable cordage can also be used as a candle wick by submerging it into wax, oil, or fat, even just the tip of it exposed and lighting it on fire. A lot of ropes can be broken down into smaller and smaller fragments that be suitable for fishing lines, stitch sutures, sewing thread, things like that. Cordage is one of those things which has seemingly infinite uses, many of which you'll never even think of until the time comes. This is why it is one of the most important resources you can have in the wilderness. You may be able to improvise cordage from natural materials in the environment, such as vines. Jungles are notorious for smaller diameter vines. Smaller diameter vines tend to work better than thick vines because they are more flexible. Soaking vines in the water will make them more pliable though. Other locations will have little to no option for wild cordage. However, even in places without vines, Sometimes there are fibrous plants with strong fibers that can be carefully separated and weaved into very respectable cordage, such as the agave plant, and even some types of tree bark. Check for long fibrous strands and plants around you, and then just try some. You never really know what'll work until you try it. And even if it doesn't work, at least you have gained some knowledge about the environment around you. There are three main qualities to good cordage and what you should look for when choosing any, especially if you're trying to improvise some out of natural materials. The three main qualities of cordage are length, strength, and flexibility. If a rope is weak in any of these three qualities, it becomes totally ineffective. What good is a rope that is strong but not flexible, or one that is very long but breaks too easy? If your rope lacks strength, specifically called tensile strength, you may want to try weaving, twisting, or braiding some together, which will make it much stronger. If you have several short pieces of cordage, there are good knots that can be used to combine them, such as the double fisherman's knot, but try to avoid using knots that are not suited for this purpose, as they could easily just slip apart. If your rope is not flexible enough, you may be able to split it lengthwise to make it thinner and more flexible. Of course, there are many options of different kinds of cordage available at your local supplier, such as climbing rope, boat rope, cotton string, bailing twine, leather lashings, 550 cord. A popular choice of bushcrafting cordage, and what I personally use most of the time, is 550 paracord. It is strong, durable, flexible, lightweight, thin, and a very good for general purpose. It can also be broken down into smaller fibers. 550 paracord is made of nylon, and it is easy to cut with a knife. It is also inexpensive and comes in a variety of colors. I always carry a large bundle of 50 feet or more of 550 paracord when I go camping into the wilderness, and most time I run out. Another great survival tool that has many uses and can be improvised into cordage is duct tape. In fact, this even comes in some store-bought survival survival kits or camping supplies. I often carry a small roll of duct tape with me in my survival kit. I aim for the heavy duty kind such as Gorilla Tape. You can take a fresh roll of duct tape and beat it out and just roll it over on top of itself in a more convenient smaller roll if you're tired of carrying the whole cardboard roll in your backpack. You know, it'd be pretty cumbersome. I have often resorted to using duct tape for cordage after my 550 pair of cord runs out. Of course, what use is cordage if you don't know how to tie any good knots? In order to be more effective with cordage, it is it is important to know at least a few basic knots and their specific purposes. Learn and practice some knots, especially just a few simple classic knots for several different uses. Don't need to know every knot in the book to effectively use cordage. 
The knots that I personally use the most are the square knot, the bow tie, the clove hitch, and the double fisherman. As always when building your survival kit based on the five C's, choose which one works best for you in the environment you're going to. If you found these videos helpful, make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe for more weekly content. If you would like to support the channel, you can check out our Patreon in the description below, and I will see you in the next video.